Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yanin Tangjuren Paisan. I'm an orthopedic resident in training at the Prince of Songkhla University. It is my greatest honor to be the MCs for today's sessions. We are now on the last day of the 11th Thailand Orthopedic Trauma Annual Congress, or TOTAC. I hope that you have had a good night rest and ready for today's topics, as I'm sure that we are saving the best for last. And without further ado, I would like to introduce our moderators for the first sessions along and around peri-implants and peri fractures. Please give a warm welcome to Assistant Professor Saran Tantavisut from Chulalongkorn University and Dr. Prisha Banjong Charun Lerd from Pranangka Hospital. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So welcome you all to the first sessions of the last day. Okay, so we have a short period of time, so we have to stay on time. So we start with uh, our first speaker. May I welcome as, so Assistant Professor Kulapat Jun Samli from Ramathipadi Hospital, Chakri Narabadin, please. Uh, hello. Good morning, Dr. Slan, Dr. Pichai, and all participants. My talk is the surgical management in peripotetic femoral fracture around the well-fit femoral stem. Today I will focus on how to differentiate the femoral stem that is well-fit versus one that it loses, which type can be successfully treated with fixation and how to fix it. In the role of atroplasty, it is necessary to perform a revision procedure on a femoral stem that has become loose. Undergoing a revision surgery can involve a significant challenges, including a large amount of blood loss, a long operative time, and the potential for complications associated with a major surgery. Fortunately, in a certain case of traumatic fracture, a loose femoral stem may be treated successfully with fixation rather than requiring a revision surgery. Let's take a look at the natural history before peripotetic fracture happened. Fracture can be happened in two ways. One, from a significant trauma. It is usually occur in a previous well-fit prosthesis. After a trauma, femoral stem may either remain well-fit or become loose. In the certain type of fracture from this event, can be successfully treated with fixation, even in the case of stem loosening. On the contrary, fracture can also occur in a previously loose femoral stem which usually need to be managed with a revision surgery. And for that, it is important to evaluate any prodromal symptom and obtain a series of previous X-ray before fracture. This allows for better understanding of the patient history and can provide important information to guide the management. Let's focus on the period well function group, which some of these can be treated with fixation. Another point to consider is whether femoral stem is cemented or cementless. And for cemented stem, the ideal fixation candidate includes those with a good cement mantle condition, a polished taper stem design, and ability to achieve anatomical reduction with stable fixation. And for cementless, the prerequisites for fixation includes a factor that do not involve primary OCO integration area and the ability to achieve anatomical reduction with stable fixation. Nevertheless, it is necessary to perform an entire operative evaluation to determine if there is an obvious stem loosening or if it's not possible to achieve anatomical reduction. If either of these situations is encountered, a revision surgery should be considered. Comparing the outcome of fixation versus revision femoral stem surgery, <coughs> A fixation group shows significant faster operative time and less interoperative but loss. On the other hand, the revision group has six times higher odds of dying within the first year after surgery and 2.5 times higher odds of experiencing post-operative complication. The fixation group had 90% union rate with 96% and 88% survival rate at one and two year follow-ups. Based on this evidence, the fixation shown a positive result and patient can be benefit from it, even in a certain type of fracture with loose stem. In conclusion, the indication for fixation includes a well-fit prosthesis, reducible and securely fit fracture fixation, and for cemented stem, a polished uh, tapered tight design is a good candidate for fixation. 
The contraindication for fixation includes a previously loose stem, the inability to achieve anatomical reduction, and a shape cross type cemented stem. Now let's go to the important surgical technique. The fixation of the femur with a retained femoral stem can be a challenging procedure. The two common issues that usually encounter are the difficulty in achieving adequate screw fixation at the proximal femur and the poor endosteal bus supply from the retaining stem. This biomechanical and biological issue can result in delayed bone healing and increased risk of implant failure. And to address these challenges, one approach is to adhere to the AO principle of fixation, utilizing specialized device to enhance proximal fixation and incorporating the biological agent. Another biomechanical consideration is that the tip of femoral stem experience a substantial high concentration of strain and strain. According to the finite element study, the well-fit femoral stem and its position in the varus alignment demonstrate the highest level of strain on the femoral cortex, especially around the stem tip. According to the study, a transverse, process, a transverse or short oblique fracture located at the stem tip in combination with a varus stem position has shown a significant risk of implant failure and non-union. To address these challenges, it may be necessary to utilize a highly secure fixation method augmented with biological bone collapse, and in a certain case, a long femoral stem revision may be recommended as suggested by some author if because of the high, significant high implant failure rate. The AO principle states that simple fracture should be treated with absolute stability. It is important to compress the fracture site together without any remaining gap. Additionally, care should be taken not to disrupt the periosteum bus supply, as this can further complicate the healing process. In case of comminuted fracture, the bridging principle is typically employed. This involves using a plate with adequate working length, ensuring that no screw zone is maintained for a distance of a couple times of the width of the femur, and utilizing the plate length that span to protect the whole femur. Additionally, a paste screw density of 0.5 is recommended. A screw should be placed beneath the stem tip to help reduce the strain in this area. There are specialized device designed to enhance proximal fixation. The locking attachment plate. The locking attachment plate is a small spider plate that is attached to the main blood LCP. This allows for the use of 3.5 millimeter locking screw with the capacity to accommodate up to eight screw. Next, the polypothetic plate. The polypothetic plate is designed to allow for the insertion of the screw in multi-directional trajectory. This plate can accommodate in both locking screw and locking screw cap. Next are the cable and circuit wire system. When compared to the circuit wire, the cable system with cable tensioner exhibit a higher load to failure. So the cable system is the stronger than the circuit wire, but both systems can help to neutralize the lateral bending force. A biomechanical study has shown that both screw fixation alone or a com and a combined screw cable system provide the highest resistance to lateral bending and torsional forces. On the contrary, the cable or circuit wire alone represent the weakest construct and should generally be avoided. The conclusion from the study, it is recommended that bicortical screw fixation should be used whenever possible. The use of cable and circuit system in conjunction with the plate can enhance the screw pull out. However, the use of cable and wire fixation as a standalone technique should be avoided. Furthermore, to distribute the strain and strain, the plate should cover the entire length of the femur. Most importantly, anatomical reduction of the fracture is crucial. Let's take a look at the case example. A 60 year old female who had a total hip for six years was involved in a car accident. The X-ray revealed a Vancouver type B comminuted fracture located ar around the femoral stem, as well as a cement fracture in zone three and zone five. It is still uncertain whether to manage by fixation or revision surgery. 
from the CT scan, the semen mantle remain adhered to the femoral stem at all zone without any loss of semen mantle fragment. The fracture pattern was a long oblique uh, with a large butterfly fragment, so it is considered to be a possible fixable. Now let's review the checklist. This patient has uh, previously functioned well without any pain. The hip implant consists of a polished taper cemented type stem, and there was an uh, intact cement mantle and no cement mantle fragment loss. There was a chance of achieving anatomical reduction. Therefore, the decision is to perform a fixation surgery. The fixation procedure was carried out using a bridging pintable. The broad LCP plates utilized to protect the entire femur. The proximal fixation was reinforced by two locking attachment plates. And the circuit wire was used as additional fixation. During the third year for up, the X-ray revealed a fully united bone and the femoral stem appeared to be well fit with outside of femoral stem loosening. Another case, a 77 years old female had left thigh pain following the minor fall. From the X-ray, the fracture was detected at the stem tip, which subject to high level of strain and strain in this area. The fracture pattern was transferred laterally and a short oblique on the medial cortex. There was also a evidence of lateral cortical weakening is observed. The history taking revealed that the patient has been taking bitforfenate and steroid for a period of 14 years for treating her osteoporosis and SLE. The diagnosis in this patient is the peripothetic atypical femoral fracture, a special condition that can lead to extremely delayed in union and very high implant failure rate. The treatment should involve switching to the bone formative agent, the utilization of the strongest construct as possible, along with the application of biological bone graft. The treatment in this patient was brought LCP with locking attachment plate. Unfortunately, a typical femoral fracture was not detected during the initial diagnosis, so the bone graft and uh, switching therapy to the bone formative agent was not carried out. And finally, the plate was failed as four months after the first surgery. During the second operation, the place was replaced with a longer one, and the utilization of DBM in combination with IREAC bone graft and teri parati, the fracture was united almost completely at three months after the second surgery. At three years, it showed completely union with all signs of femoral stem loosening. So the conclusion from my talk, the cemented stem consider fixation in a polished taper cemented stem design, intact cement mantle, normal hip function before fracture, and fixable fracture. For cementless stem, consider fixation in fracture that does not involve the primary osseo integration area and fixable fracture. Always follow AO principle of fixation. Peripothetic fixation device along with the bone glove should be utilized. Bicortical screw is the strongest one. Please avoid using cable or circuit wire as a standalone technique for fixation. And beware peripotetic atypical femoral fracture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kulapat.